Lando Norris was relatively slow to react to the lights going out for the sprint race, and so his pole disappeared effectively in the first 10 metres. Lewis Hamilton alongside him made a fabulous start in the Mercedes. Side by side into that famous turn one, lots of room going in, and you couldn't blame Lando for just staying there on the outside. Lewis had the inside running because he'd got the better run down into turn one. Lando on the outside, and his thinking was, well, there's a left-hander at the end of all this. If I can stay there on the outside, I could still be on the inside for that left-hander. I could still take the lead. You can kind of sympathise with him, having got the pole and having lost it so quickly. That was what was in his mind. But two-thirds of the way through that long right-hander, he just basically ran out of grip, ran wide, and he was quite lucky to be able to shuffle back into the traffic about P6 alongside Charles Leclerc. At that point, was middle of the road so there's a little bit of a slot there but it was a dodgy thing because he could have seen more cars than that go past anyway for Lando Norris that sprint race effectively over in the first couple of seconds but for Lewis Hamilton absolute nirvana nobody in front of him clear track and leading the sprint race he started to pull away and everything looked good everybody was on medium tires apart from Lewis's teammate George Russell who qualifying where he did not having made it through to Q3 P11 took the gamble, as Mercedes often do, we talked about this in the live stream, and just put him on a different tar strategy to see what would happen. In this case, the soft red tar. Big question mark about whether that tar, of course, would last the full 19 laps of the sprint race. Anyway, Lewis in front, looking really good. Fernando Alonso had also benefited from that moment with Lando Norris and had slotted into second place. So the interesting thing in the first couple of laps was to see if Fernando could do anything about the Mercedes. The Aston Martin, pretty quick in a straight line, but even with DRS unable to do anything about Lewis. Lewis driving in a very composed and relaxed way, looking very good, pulling away slightly from Fernando Alonso and the Aston Martin and then in P3, an ominous P3 for everybody else, Max Verstappen in the Red Bull, just looking very calm, not even touching the curbs, looking after the tyres in this early stage of the race, followed by Carlos Sainz, who drove a very aggressive first couple of corners, had got in front of Sergio Perez, some nice outside overtakes and moves there. Typical Carlos Sainz of recent times, really good. Uh, contained aggression, I think is what you could say. After that, Sergio Perez, uh, who had been consumed by Carlos, as I say, and then Charles Leclerc, who'd managed to keep that position from Lando Norris, as char charging as hard as he could. And the McLaren still obviously a very good car, but Lando beside himself, I imagine, with frustration and probably rage, I would guess. Anyway, the race began to take shape when Fernando's tyres started to go off. And at this point, Max, who had been cruising, really, and everybody thinking, wow, is Max Verstappen going to finish any third? Does he have a problem? Got to say, he did have that engine misfire in qualifying for the sprint race yesterday, as I mentioned. And overnight, they'd changed the number four spark plug in the power unit, the Red Bull powertrain Honda power unit. We don't often hear about spark plugs being changed, but that's what it was, a spark plug. Back to the old Ron Taranak, Jack Brabham, we can fix it days. Anyway, the car now on song. He didn't have any battery uh, in the first couple of laps, but they managed to sort that out as well with uh, radio transmissions and the pushing of the appropriate toggle on the steering wheel. Max Verstappen started to close in on Fernando. And as he normally does, hadn't got within DRS range, just did him at the end of the, melt, the long back straight. There was no waiting around. And suddenly Max was up to P2. Lewis is leading by about two and a half, three seconds at this point. Still looking quite good, but he'd already started to radio that he was losing grip, particularly on slow speed corners. And it was only a matter of laps before Max was on him as well. He'd looked after the tyres so well. And anyway, he had more downforce. He could do more with his tyre management. He had a bigger sweet spot and he was just right up there in a straight line as well. So he quickly caught Lewis. There was a rather pathetic attempt to say to Lewis on the radio, oh, Max is behind you, Lewis, to which he replied, yeah, I know I can see him. Um, uh, but that has to go under the heading of one of the most unnecessary radio messages of all time, I suspect. Anyway, uh, Max on to Lewis, lost no time again, right down the inside at the end of the back straight into the hairpin. Left his braking pretty late to do that. Lewis, Lewis braked late as well. There were no lockups. He had locked up the previous lap as it happened, but uh, on this lap, Lewis braking pretty late to give it as a hard as hard a task as possible to Max, but Max did it beautifully and thereafter just pulled away. So it was a Max Verstappen win in the sprint race, going away, as they say, with the car in perfect shape 
shape, uh, perfect balance, perfect use of the tires, perfect judgment of the race, nothing nothing uh, to fluster him early on as ever, and, and a, and a well-deserved victory for Max Verstappen. Lewis, absolutely delighted to be P2 nonetheless, to have beaten everybody else. Well, for P3, there was definitely a motor race. Pressing pause for a second, I've often criticized sprint races. As I said yesterday, quite pleased to have had one because qualifying in the wet was enthralling yesterday, and nobody would have been out had there been no sprint this weekend. And the sprint race was interesting to watch in, in terms of how the cars performed without much practice and testing behind them. That was a good thing about it. But here I'm getting to my other bet noir, which is DRS. Max didn't need DRS to get past Fernando Alonso or Lewis Hamilton. It made the job easier for him, obviously, but he didn't need it. He was going to pass them anyway, for sure. And then in for third place, there was a massive battle. And you'd think there, well, this is what DRS is supposed to be all about. This is where we can get some overtaking. But they're all clogged up behind Fernando Alonso's Aston Martins. Carlos Sainz could do nothing about him, even with DRS. Everybody else is in the DRS train anyway. And so DRS was completely nullified by that battle for P3. And it didn't actually produce any overtaking at all. So end of my rant about DRS. But uh, I'll just finish it by saying if we'd had no DRS, the result of the sprint race would have been no different at all. Anyway, getting back to that battle for P3, it was it was Fernando Alonso basically with Carlos Sainz, Sergio Perez, Charles Leclerc, Lando Norris all stacked up behind him. Carlos Sainz definitely had the pace, definitely could have driven faster had uh, had Fernando not been there. And as the last few laps approached, Fernando's tyres deteriorated more. Deg, there was more deg on the Aston Martin, and Carlos was all over him. But where to get him? Because he obviously couldn't get him with DRS, as I say, at the end of the straight. So he, he, he did what he'd been doing in the early laps. And he started using bits of outside road. And I thought it was one of the most audacious and spectacular pieces of driving I've seen for a long time was Carlos on the outside of Fernando Alonso. These two Spaniards, as I say, uh, I'm not sure there's much love lost between them now as well. Carlos on the outside going into turn seven, which is the corner I talked about in the live stream. What I think the most dramatic corner in Shanghai. We're talking, okay, they weren't doing 170 miles an hour on medium tires at that stage of the race. They're probably doing 150, 155 miles an hour. He's around the outside of Fernando Alonso there. Unbelievable commitment and skill, skill level and feel, you got to say. And he pulled it off. He was on the outside. He was then on the inside for the next right-hander. And then it all went wrong because Fernando whether it was just being passed by Carlos Sainz specifically or whether it was just being any nobody should be able to pass me on the outside of that very quick corner that's my corner we then just basically drove into into Carlos Sainz they touched Fernando got a puncture as a result Carlos ran wide and Sergio Perez zapped down the inside to take a very clear and easy P3 it would have been three it was P3 right through to the finish Carlos's car was obviously slightly damaged and his teammate Charles Leclerc obviously keen to do well had uh, got the DRS on Carlos on the straight, on that lap, on the back straight. And as they went into the hairpin, Carlos defended down the inside. Charles Leclerc went to the outside, had a better car by now, had more grip. They both brake really late. And, and, and Carlos, mid-corner, no surprise with the tyres at that stage of the race, ran wide, lost grip, and effectively pushed Charles Leclerc off the track. I suspect amongst all the Ferrari fans, there will be quite a lot of chat about that. Interestingly, it was not an incident that was brought to the attention of the stewards, unlike the Alonso uh, Carlos Sainz one. And so I think that's a good thing. You know, it's two teammates, two Ferrari drivers. Let, let Ferrari sort it out. I can't imagine Charles was that happy about it, but I can imagine that Carlos Sainz afterwards would have said, look, I'm really sorry. I was down the inside. I lost grip. I'm sorry, Charles. And I'm sure there'll be no massively ill feeling there over and above the, the feeling that's there already, which is that Carlos Sainz is doing a good enough job to have kept his Ferrari drive and he hasn't kept it and he's leaving at the end of the year. So that's always the underlying tone of anything that happens at Ferrari now. Anyway, Charles did get Carlos, of course, and finished a good fourth. Carlos was fifth, ahead of the two McLarens. George Russell eventually finished eighth. A good drive on the soft tyres. They didn't go off. Amazing performance. Obviously, the track is picking up grip. Guan Yojo delighted the fans by finishing ninth. And Kevin Magnussen drove really well, I thought, in the Haas Ferrari to finish tenth. So that was a sprint race. Disappointing for Lando Norris. For Max Verstappen, yet another win, a beautifully judged win. But for Lewis Hamilton, a place on the podium, a taste of what it's like to lead a Formula One race again. Anyway, that was the prelude to qualifying for the Grand Prix proper. We'll be back with another video as we review what happened there.